Hello, and welcome to iCloud Essentials for Educators, Understanding, Managing, and Customizing Your iCloud Account Settings. This session is asynchronous, meaning that these tasks will be structured in a way that allow you to work on them on your own pace and your own time. I'm excited you're here today, so let's get started with some norms. First, our professional development norms. Make sure that as you're here that you're committed, you're responsible, respectful, and safe. Um, particularly because you're watching on your own, if you need to pause the video to go to the bathroom or grab a snack and come back, or you're wanting to actively participate by going into the tasks and coming back to the lesson, you're more than welcome to do that. So I'd like you to take a second and just think about a norm you'd like to focus on. Wonderful. In addition, there are some norms that are specific to this asynchronous session. First, use your settings for speed. So you can do that in the bottom right corner. There is a gear icon and you can change it to one times or one and a half or two times if that's best for you. Or if I'm talking too quickly, you can make the speed go slower. This is great and helps you focus your attention on a speed that works for you and personalize your learning. In addition, use the pause button to pause and think or rewatch sections you would like to pause and go back to. If you have questions or comments, let's connect. I'd love to answer your questions. Um, send me an email. I'll have that here displayed on the next slide. Um, so take a second just to pause and orient yourself to the settings and pause features. Wonderful. Thanks for doing that. Okay, so let's get started. Today, our learning intentions are to define an Apple ID and iCloud, explain best practices for iCloud syncing, and investigate privacy and security measures on your Apple device. You're gonna know you're when successful when you can define what an Apple ID and iCloud are. You can explain those best practices in terms of syncing, privacy, and security, so all three. And then you can access additional resources and support. I recognize that in 30 minutes, you may not be an expert, but this bite-sized PD is to help support you and to help continue to provide opportunities for you to engage around this topic. Of course, every PD that we do connects back to our multi-tiered system of support. We're focusing up here on the top here specifically because this one is for educators, those high quality academic behavioral instruction and intervention. I love this section, ongoing targeted quality professional development, coaching supports and effective instruction for all students. So knowing that this is for you so that you can effectively support instruction in terms of syncing and protecting your privacy as well as student privacy. A brief introduction, um, now that we've gone through our norms, my name is Emma Moss. I am a digital teaching and learning specialist here in the instructional supports department. There is my email as promised. I would love to connect with you is emma.moss at canyonsdistrict.org. And I get the opportunity to do these bite-sized PDs on topics that I think are important for educators. And this one specifically is important for you. So what's our plan today as we jump in? First, the welcome norms, intentions, and agenda we've gone through. That's where we're at right now. We're going to spend the next 10 minutes understanding iCloud syncing. What syncs, what is syncing, what does that mean? Then we're going to explore best practices for syncing versus not syncing. That includes privacy and security. We'll give you a chance to have some choice and explore one on your own. And then we'll wrap up with resources and thank you and revisit those learning intentions. All right, so we're going to start out with what is an Apple ID? So we're gonna watch a video. In that, I want you to look for what's that Apple ID and how does it connect to iCloud and other services? To model some best practices, I've given you some sentence stems through these questions if those help you. If not, don't worry about them, but I wanted to model some best practice for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause my webcam and then play this video and then we'll come back together in just a second.
Welcome back. So I just wanted you to take a second and pause. What is an Apple ID? What did we learn from that? And how does that connect to other iCloud services? Wonderful. So if you said something like an Apple ID is your ID to log into things or it's how you connect with Apple services, you got it. Um, iCloud is how that data is stored. So kind of talked about connecting and how that's shared across devices. Um, iCloud storage stores different types of things and we're going to look at that next. Also, I want to point out that if for some reason the sound on this video was weird for you or it was glitchy because sometimes that happens in recordings, this video is also linked and available in the slides. So let's talk about what iCloud backs up, moving on to our next thing. Um, we're going to go ahead and open a reading, and I'm going to do that by clicking on, speaking of those slides, this reading icon. This opens the Apple support article, and we're going to scroll down and read through what iCloud backup includes. So I'm going to kind of point out some features as I go through this. And going back to our purpose for reading, we're looking at the types of data iCloud backs up or seeks. Now, if you would like to read this on your own, you're welcome to pause or skip ahead on this part, but I'm going to go through some of these items. So iCloud backs up things like device settings, your home screen layout, and app organization. This iCloud works across devices. So for your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, and Apple Watch, um, if you have those, and they are synced to that Apple ID. So like I said, device settings, home screen layout, and app organization, meaning what things you have set up on your device, how your apps, like if you have like your messages on your first screen and then you have your New York Times link on your second screen, um, that will save. Um, ringtones, visual voicemail passwords, um, any sort of contacts, um, Apple Watch information, photos, videos, messages, any data that apps are storing, um, iMessage, so those messages, all of those are stored inside of your Apple ID. I think it's very important too to look at the app data, things like games, messaging apps that may not be iMessage, um, anything that's storing data, if you have the setting turned on, it will sync to iCloud. So these are things that will sync. Um, I think the biggest thing that educators see is photos, videos, and messages, this part right here, sync if those Apple IDs are connected. So if you read this on your own, I just want you to think about what, what does that back up? If you were listening, I want you to start thinking about why do we care? So why do we care that from our iPad here or our iPhone or a Mac, why do we care if it syncs to iCloud? Okay, thanks for taking a second to reflect on that. Let's talk about it. So if you have an Apple ID that syncs everything across your devices. Sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be not so good. So a visual here, iCloud uses, it's, it's connected to things like if you are an elementary Apple Classroom. Um, it can share if you have photos or lesson plans that you have taken on your Mac. Like let's say you screenshot a graphic organizer that you're going to use and then it auto syncs to your iPad so you can pull that up and annotate that with your students. That is great practice. Those are wonderful things. Now, let's say that you have decided to use your Apple ID, that is your personal Apple ID with your school computer. That will then sync, if you have the settings turned on, things like messages, which maybe you don't want those from um, those that you're messaging. Maybe you don't want those on your school computer. It will sync things like photos. So your family vacation from your trip to Mexico, let's say you went there, will sync as well. Um, your contact information and all of the data that is included with that, emails, uh, phone numbers, pictures that are associated with them, notes, things like that will all sync if those are turned on. So I want you to take a second and silently reflect, would you want that information that is uploaded, shared with your employer or others? wonderful thanks for taking a chance to reflect in thinking about this um i don't think that sometimes this is about i think sometimes people approach this and think oh well it's only stuff that could be inappropriate or things like that but sometimes it's just about data sharing i don't know 
that I want my employer reading the text messages that I send between my husband or my mom. Um, or maybe you don't even want the ones that are shared with questions your child and things that they're dealing with. And when you sync that, it uploads um, to iCloud and then it becomes subject to policies that are present. So that is something to think about. So moving forward, let's look at best practices for syncing. Okay. Um, and then we'll talk about the task. First, selective syncing. So this change, you can change settings to adjust what syncs. So let me show you how to do that on a Mac. So you're going to go up into your top corner and you're going to go into system settings and you can see that I have some updates here to run shortly. And you're going to open those system settings. You're going to go up to your Apple ID. So that's just right here at the top. And you're going to come down to iCloud. Okay, it's going to show you how much of your iCloud is there. And you can see mine is mostly photos and videos, and I have those turned on. Okay, you can adjust these settings by clicking apps using iCloud and turning them off. And it will stop syncing any new things that you have. So if you delete a picture, you need to delete, turn off your sync, delete that picture from iCloud, and then make sure that that's not syncing before you do that. Otherwise, it will delete the data during the sync. So just one more time, if you're like, oh, I uploaded something I didn't want to, and now I'm going to go turn it off, make sure you turn off the sync first, then go delete it on iCloud so that it doesn't delete it on all your devices as well. So you could turn that off. You just toggle it off. Okay. But I'm not going to do that because I want it to sync, but that's how you do it. Um, you can also turn things on iCloud Drive. You can see different apps that are syncing. So I could turn off messages or Outlook or QuickTime Player. All of those are my apps that are syncing. And you can turn off, you can see here, I have turned off passwords and keychain. I didn't want my passwords syncing across devices. I'd rather just enter them in. This is how you do it on a Mac or an Apple laptop. Um, you can also go into settings on an iPhone or on an iPad. And I have a video linked in the resources section that will show you how to do that. It's very similar. You go into settings, you find where it says iCloud, and then you're able to adjust those settings. So first, best practice, selective syncing. The next one we have is, if possible, use a separate Apple ID. I will be honest, this is the best thing that you can do. If you have already synced your personal Apple ID to your computer and you would like to set up a different Apple ID, please talk to your field tech and they can help you do that. The last two are ongoing. Make sure that you're reviewing which settings and app data is synced. Um, if that is something that you decide to do. So I went through and I showed you, yeah, I have my photos and videos on, but those are only syncing across because I have separate Apple IDs, my school devices. Additionally, do regular audits. Review the data that is synced. Review that that's something that you want to sync. So your task is to try it out. Option one, go ahead and go explore or adjust your settings in your Mac, iPad, or if you are provided a phone, one of those Apple devices. Or option two, take a second to pause this video, contact your field tech, and ask them about setting up a unique Apple ID if you have used your personal one. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to pause the video so you can do that. And I'm going to pause for a few seconds and then we'll keep going. Wonderful. Hopefully that was a good experience for you. I'm assuming that you've paused or that you're planning to go back and do that, but that you had a chance to explore those settings as well as maybe contacting your field tech. So now that we've talked about best practices for syncing, let's explore privacy and security. So I'm going to give you a little bit of choice here. I want you to go into one of these topics and I want you to explore it. So either best practices for passwords, two-factor authentication, or find my Mac features. These are all clickable squares. So for example, here's two-factor authentication. It's going to load that from Apple. There are Apple articles that are linked. And I'm going to give you about I would say like five to 10 minutes to explore, and then we'll come back together and share something we learned. I'm gonna go ahead and invite you to pause the video. If you are in a situation that it would be better for you for me to just walk through, I'm gonna be walking through two-factor authentication, and you can continue to watch this, or you can jump forward past that. You'll know that we're done with this section when we come back to this screen.
wonderful. If you're here and you just want to do one together, we're going to go look at two-factor authentication for an Apple ID. So you may first be wondering, what is two-factor authentication? What this is, is it's an additional password or code that authenticates that you say you, you are who you say you are. There we go. Um, and so you put in your email and then your password, so your Apple ID and your password, and then it asks you to verify, so the two factor, the second factor of who you are. Oftentimes, Apple will do that by sending a code to another one of your devices, whether that's your a phone or if that is your iPad to authenticate when you log in. So I love this part right here. It says two factor authentication is an extra layer of security for Apple ID designed to make sure that you're the only one who can access the account, even if someone else knows your password. If we scroll down, there is a way that you can turn on that two factor authentication for your Apple ID and it has it based on the device. So on an iPhone, iPad or iPod touch, you go into settings, your name, and then you just tap to turn that on. On your Mac, you choose the Apple menu, system settings, then click on your name, click sign in security, and then two-factor authentication. So let me go ahead and show you on a Mac. So I'm going to go back to that Apple icon up in the top corner, go to system settings. Then I'm going to click when it shows up my name. Then it's said to go to, and I'm going to verify the instructions here. I'm going to move this for a second. It says next, then click your name, choose sign in and security, and then next to two-factor authentication authentication. So I'm going to go into password and security. I'm going to guess that there might be a name change there. There it is, two-factor two authentication and mine is turned on. Okay, so that information is there for you to use. You can also add trusted phone numbers. You can see here that mine is blurred out. Um, I just don't want to share that data with everyone watching this, but you can add additional trusted phone numbers. That is a way to add, if you don't want to add your personal um, Apple ID, to your computer, but you want to be able to use like a cell phone that you have that has a separate Apple ID, that is a way to do that. And you can just hit plus and then get a verification code. Or you can go on the web and sign in with your Apple ID, answer those security questions, then tap continue, and it will walk you through that. It's really easy to set up. And as long as you have those two devices with you most of the time, um, it's a pretty easy way to verify and set up security for your Apple ID. All right, we are back on this screen, which is what I promised if you were fast forwarding because you explored something else or you joined us as we walked through two-factor authentication together, thank you. I just want you to take a second and explore, um, think about what you explored or um, what you learned. Wonderful, I know in our session, we talked about how you could um, take your personal phone number and add it, even though it was a separate ID as a trusted phone number so that you could have two factor authentication set up. Thanks for exploring and picking a pathway that worked for you. As we wrap up, I wanted to include some resources. So the first is syncing with iCloud on Mac and Apple devices. This is a video that walks you through not only the Mac like we did today, but also walks you through an iPad and an iPhone. So if you'd like to see that. There is also a YouTube support playlist from Apple support that walks through all the basics beyond what we've talked about of iCloud. So if you want to know more and extend your knowledge, you can also read what does iCloud back up, which is the link that we looked at today. Um, there's also a knowledge base article about iCloud implementation for Canyon School District. You just log in to Team Dynamics where our knowledge base is housed with your Canyon School District username and password and then search um, iCloud and you'll be able to find that. For additional support, you're welcome to email me, but if it has to do with iCloud or adjusting those settings, please contact your building field tech for additional support there. Also, if you are going, I'm new, I'm not sure who my building field tech is, contact your instructional coach. And if all else fails and you're like, I don't know who that is because I'm brand new or I'm just coming to Canyons, you, are, you should reach out to your secretary and they will be able to connect you with all of those resources. Just wanna make sure that you can get what you need. All right, let's revisit our learning intention and success criteria. So the first is that we defined an Apple ID. We talked about that being our Apple login and that is unique to every person. We talked about iCloud being the storage of where that information is stored once you log in with your Apple ID. We looked at best practices today. So those were the pieces of information we talked about, selective syncing, reviewing, setting up a separate Apple ID. Those are our best practices for iCloud syncing. 
we investigated privacy and security by exploring either multi-factor authentication, password best practices, or Find My Mac. And then we also looked at um, accessing additional resources and support, which is on our previous slide about contacting your field tech or other videos or articles that you can engage with, including our knowledge base articles for Canyon School District. So hopefully today at this point, you're feeling successful. You're feeling like, yeah, I got a basis. I know what to do to move forward. I would invite you to take those steps. Like as you've been listening you're, and, you're, and you have those thoughts that are like, oh, I should do that please do those. Um, it will help you and support you to provide the best learning environment for our students and for you and your safety and security as an educator. I like to always end with this a quote. So I love this one. It says, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. This is from the Roman philosopher Seneca. Know that sometimes it's like, oh, they're just lucky that their stuff didn't sink. Um, no, that was a preparation. Educators change settings. Um, and I love that this is about preparation. So this is your chance. Prepare, uh, take a moment to review those settings and make iCloud work for you. So thank you so much for watching. Um, the icons here are linked and given credit. There are some important links here for you as well. If you'd like Bite Size PD and credit, you can visit canyonsdistrict.org slash canyonsu slash Bite Size PD. I also, as an educator, am always looking to improve. So if you go to bit.ly slash feedback, the number four, Emma, again, that's bit.ly ly slash feedback for Emma, or there is a QR code here that you can scan. I would love your feedback. Just tell me it's the iCloud PD and to see how I did. So thank you again for being here and joining us asynchronously. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.